Jazz. Hello everyone and welcome to Tech with NK. In this video, I'm going to propose a solution to the exercise outdated from CS50's introduction to programming with Python. I'm going to show you how I went about to solve this. However, my aim is just to provide you with a few tips or ideas that you could build upon while attempting the exercise on your own. That said, let's look at the exercise and see what's expected from us. There's a lot that's written here, but I'm just going to skip this and we're going to start at this point. What's expected from us is, we are to create a Python file, we we'll call it outdated.py, and implement a program that prompts the user for a date in month, day, and year order, formatted like this, that's either you have a 9 backslash 8 backslash 1636 or September 8, 1636 with a comma at this point and spaces, wherein the month in the latter might be any of the values in the list below, that's from January to December for this case. And we are expected to output a date in this format, year, month, and day. And if the user's input is not a valid date in either format, we are to prompt the user again assuming that every month has no more than 31 days and no need to check if a month has 28, 29, 30 or 31 days. We've been given a number of hints here. We've been told to look at the Python documentation for string methods and for list methods. However, we've already been given the specific methods that will be necessary for us to solve this exercise. For the string methods, we've been told to use split and for the list method, we've been told to use index. And to format the integer with leading zeros, We've been given this code to use. Looking at the demo that has been given to us, we'll see that when we run our code outdated.py, we'll prompt the user to enter input and this is what the user entered the date in this format and the date has been converted to the right format for year, month and day. And when we run the code a second time, if the user entered the date in this format, you see that it's actually a wrong format and so the user was prompted once more to enter the date and when they enter the date in the right format, the output was given to them, and so on and so forth. I think the explanation for the exercise is clear enough, so we'll just open VS Code and we're going to do this together. In VS Code, you'll notice I went ahead and copied the list that was given to us on the website for the valid months, and I just wrote this comment here for sample dates, because I intend to use this to explain the code later on. So how are we going to go about this exercise? I'm going to separate my code into two parts. The first part, I'm going to check the date in this format, that's with backslashes. And the second part, I'm going to check my date in this format, that's with spaces. I'll start my code by creating a function to check the day in each of these formats because the check is actually the same. I'm going to use the dev keyword. I'm going to call this function check day and we'll take a parameter or call it day. And in this function, I'm just going to return true if the user's input is found between 1 and 31. I'll go ahead and I'm going to type return true if 1 is less than or equals to the int of day and day is less than or equal to equal to 31 else return false. And so this function is all we need to be able to check the day in either of these formats. And with this done, I'm going to initialize a loop to do the rest of the checks because you realize our code is supposed to keep running till the user enters an input that's correct. Because if the user's input is incorrect, we are supposed to keep prompting the user till the input is correct or till the input is in the right format. I'm going to use a while loop or just say while true because I want the code to keep running infinitely till I decide to break it at some point. Then I'll go ahead to get input from the user. I'm going to save this input in a variable or call it date. And I'm going to use the input function to get the input from the user. I'll pass a string to it. I'm going to say date and give space for the user to enter their input. And I'm going to strip this input using the function strip to remove any leading or trailing white spaces. Then I'm going to go ahead to try to split the user's input depending on the format. I'm going to create three variables or call them month, day, and year. And I'm going to set this to date.split. And I'm going to split this with a backslash. So this line of code should be able to check if the user's input is in this format and split the code with the backslash. 
so this is going to return 9 8 and 1636 and since we're assigning those values to month day and year month is going to be 9 day is going to be 8 and year is going to be 1636 and for the sake of this video i'm just going to go ahead and check if the month and the day are correct and then print the output as is expected from us in the exercise we could actually do this in out of the try block because that line of code is not supposed to fail or return any errors. However, for the sake of this video, I'll just do it in this try block. And later on, when trying to solve this exercise on your own, you could try taking it out of the try block and see how the code is going to run. So I'll start by saying, if one is less than or equals to the nth of month, we we'll have to convert the string to an integer, or this is less than or equal to 12 and check day of day so this line of code should be able to check if the month is found between 1 and 12 because if you look well in this format the month should only be a number so we're checking if that number is found between 1 and 12 and if the day is found between 1 and 31 per this function and if that's the case we want to print our output in the expected format i'll go ahead and say print i have to do this as an f string I'm going to use curly braces here to get the variable here. Then I'm going to put a dash. I'll go ahead and open another set of curly braces. Then I'll say nth of month. Then using the format that was given to us on the website to add a leading zero to the month, I'm going to say colon zero two. So that if necessary, the month is going to be prefixed with a zero. Then I'm going to put a dash and open another set of curly braces. I'm still going to use int to convert the day into an integer and use the same format given to us on the website 02 so that day 2 will be prefixed with a 0 if necessary. But if this check fails, we're going to say else continue. So this should make our program to go back to the top of the loop and prompt the user once more to enter a date. So this block of code should be able to check if the user enters a date in this format that's 9 backslash 8 backslash 1636 but if the user enters input in this format september 8 1636 line 27 is going to fail and return a value error so we're going to go ahead and catch that error and write more code tell our program what to do in such cases so i'll go ahead i'll give a space here and i'm going to tap accept of value error what do i want to do or try once more to split the user's input or create three variables again or call them month day and year and i'm going to set these variables to date.split and instead of splitting with the backslash i'm going to split with a space because you realize here that what's common is a space to separate september from 8 and from 1636 and if we succeed to split this i'm going to go ahead and continue my code with an if statement I'm going to check if month is found in months because we've been told that the user's input could only be a month from January to December and check day will take day at index 0. So what we're trying to do is to check if the day is found between 1 and 31 and we're taking day at index 0 because if you look at this sample input from the user you realize that in this case day will contain 8 and comma and since we want to check the eighth and taking away the comma we're taking day at index zero because this will be index zero and then comma will be index one and we need to do one final check we're going to check if there's a comma in this user's input so comma in day or admit that this is actually a little long and we're checking a number of things here but if we look at it step by step you realize that this is actually easy so the first thing that we're checking is if month is found in months because we've been told that the user could enter months only in this list from January to December so we check that first that's if month in months then what do we need to check we need to check if the day is found between 1 and 31 so we're doing a check day and index 0 so that we can get only the value and take away the comma and we're also checking if there's actually a comma in this user's day or in this user's input this is because the user could enter something like let's say september 6 1998 this is actually a wrong format because there is no comma after the six so we need to check for this as well 
and that's why I'm checking if there's a comma in the variable day. Let me wipe this and coming back to this line of code. So if this check actually equals to be true, we're going to print our output in the expected format. I'm going to print this as an F string. I'm going to use curly braces to get the year for the user's input or put a dash. And to print the month as a number and not in letter format like September, instead of saying September 1 to say 9, we're going to use the list months that has been given to us. We use the method index to get the index of each month. I'm going to pass the parameter month to it. This is the user's input. Then I'm going to add one to this value because let's say for example, the user entered September. In this case, we're going to get the index of September from this list. And if we count this, we realize that January will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And so September will have the index 8. But we know that September is actually the 9th month and not the 8th month. So we're adding 1 to each of these index values. And before we come out of these curly braces, I'm going to use the syntax that was given to us online to add a 0 and a 2 here. So that our month will be prefixed with a 0 if necessary. I'm going to put another dash here or open another set of curly braces and I'm going to convert the day at index 0 using the int function like I explained earlier. Then I'll add the 0 to at the end so that our day will be prefixed with a 0 if necessary. And if this check fails, all I want to do is to use an else statement to keep prompting the user to enter a valid input. So I'll say else continue. And this try box should work just fine if the user enters input in this other format, September 8, 1636. And I'm just going to add an accept block here just in case. So go ahead and say accept value error. Continue. So this should go back to the top of the loop, prompting the user once more to enter input. But if the user's input is OK and we're able to print the output in the expected format, I'm just going to break out of our loop thereby ending the program. So our code is complete and I think it's clear enough. I'm going to go ahead and save this and I'm going to open up my terminal and we're going to test the code together. I'm going to run python of outdated.py and as expected we've been prompted to enter a date. Let's try with something that's actually correct. Let's say 0908-1964 and as we expected 1964-09-08. Let's run this code again and try something else. Let's say April 16, 2024. And we've been prompted to enter the date again. Why? Because we omitted a comma after 16. Let me try this again. I'll say April 16. This time around, I'll put a comma 2024. And as expected, 2024-0401. And if you keep testing this code, you realize that the code is okay and works just fine. So that's it for this exercise and I'm going to end here for today. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll be more than pleased to answer you. If you loved the video, do well to hit the like and subscribe button so as to support the channel and I look forward to seeing you in my upcoming videos. That said, have a good day.